told me five years ago that I would be on a stage after Rowan Hazard, I would have probably squealed and then fainted. I like Rowan Hazard. However, on the other hand, had somebody told me five years ago that I would be standing here as a winemaker in front of you, I would have probably fainted as well. Um, my story is one of how life can deal you very strange cards and it's up to yourself what you make of it. Um, in fact, in order to explain to you how I have become a winemaker, uh, a wine consultant, and also a wine educator since lately, I need to go back a little bit into my childhood. Um, my parents were both very busy business people. My dad is, well, the big example of a self-made man, and my mother always had his back. There was, however, one thing they were always talking about, and that was their retirement. Not just a retirement, no, one with a capital R. Um, my father's father had passed away very early and he was also a working man. Um, that actually made my parents think that they wanted to retire very early. They didn't want to do that in rainy old Belgium or Holland. No, they chose to go to France. Um, we have been a family in love with France for ages. Uh, we used to go all our holidays out there. We used to, well, eat French, drink French, whatever. Um, well, my parents then decided they didn't want to do nothing after they had retired. They wanted to actually run a winery. My dad is somebody who has always worked in the oil and gas with stainless steel and the likes. And it was really funny to hear him talking about what he was going to do to his vines when he finally owned them. Well, my parents started looking actively in 03 and around 04 they found a small winery in the French Bordeaux area called Chateau Cadoulon. Well, when they bought it, it wasn't much to look at, honestly. Um, the vines were in a terrible state. The winery was even worse. Um, we had a tractor out there that belonged in a museum, not in a vineyard. Um, it was quite special. But as a family, we started to work towards their retirement, which meant making the house inhabitable at first. That took some time. Um, we went there for four years, practically every weekend, every holiday, painting, getting everything in order for them to go and live there. That would be in 08. Um, well, during doing that, we had a winemaker who took care of the vines and the winemaking. So the chateau was actually operational. My dad had a new winery built already, so everything was nice and modern. Um, I could really see my parents living there happily ever after, um, after they retired. However, in 2008, um, thunder struck in our family. My mother suffered a massive heart attack just one month before she would actually retire. Um, the last thing mom told me was um, to have my boyfriend take care of her little dog and also for me to stop crying because it wasn't that bad. Well, um, it was that bad. She went into a coma and passed away 10 days later without having regained consciousness. Um, well, we all fell into a massive black hole. I'm an only child, so my dad and me were missing her like crazy. Um, he immediately decided not to retire because my mom was only 50. They had chosen to retire in that month and she didn't make it. That hurt him so much that he actually kept on working. So he is still until today to try and, well, fill the void a little, I think. Um, however, that left us with a massive problem. We had a winery in Bordeaux that was operational, ready to actually receive my parents. Um, we just sent out the winemaker because he wasn't doing a good job. So that complicated things. At that point, my boyfriend and me uh, didn't see any other option than actually just going back and forth between Bordeaux and Holland all the time. Evidently, we had our own jobs and our own lives at that point, but we tried to keep the things working. Um, after one of those famous weekends where we did a wine bottling and slept, I think, five to six hours in a four-day period, uh, my boyfriend, on the way back home to Holland, told me, well, Chantal, why don't we just go and live there and try and get things sorted out, and then we'll see what we'll do. Well, 
he must have looked straight into my heart when he said that, because I had been contemplating moving to France and running the chateau for a couple of months at that point. However, I didn't dare to ask him. Um, he didn't really like the French, didn't speak France, French, and he had his whole family in the Netherlands, so that's a big thing to ask. However, now he actually proposed it to me. Um, to make a long story short, two weeks later, we left. Um, we, a large car, four, four dogs, 14 parrots, looking like a zoo on the road, moving to France. Well, when arriving there, um, at first, it felt marvelous. It felt like being at home. Um, and I still believe thoroughly that if there's any place in this world where my mother's soul is, it is at Chateau Cadolon. Um, I can always feel her there. However, reality kicked in quite quickly because, of course, things needed to be sorted out. I spoke French, I spoke school French, but I didn't speak business French, and I needed to run a winery. Um, that resulted in special uh, occasions, honestly. I can still see myself standing in front of the French customs, and those are not like the friendly guys we know from Holland. No, French customs are a winemaker's nightmare, honestly. Because there's so much wine in France, they need to be hugely strict. And we had a chateau that hadn't been run very well for three or four months, so you can imagine the mess it was. Well, I was standing there, like this, stammering in my school French, and that was still one of the worst moments of my life. I was almost crying, they were telling me my wine didn't exist, and I knew I had that wine, I saw it just five minutes ago, so that was terrible. However, um, in the past years, that went better. I learned to speak better French, but I also bribed them with massive amounts of uh, Belgian chocolate, which helps a lot. Um, so now we're good friends. Uh, on the other hand, the biggest challenge after just learning how to run the business was how to make the wine. Um, I am an absolute alpha-oriented person. I mean, my troubles with science and math, everything like that, in high school were epic. If you wanted to say somebody's really bad at something, you just said, it's like Chantal with math. <laughs> Terrible, really bad. And now, I needed to become a winemaker. To do that, I had three months. Um, I only saw one solution at that point, and that was to buy as many books on wine science as I could possibly find, and stop sleeping. Um, yeah, that worked out. Uh, I started to understand what I needed to do uh, at a certain stage, but I am still marveled at the fact that in 08, my first vintage, we ended up with something that looked and tasted like a wine. That's mainly thanks to our friends in the area. We had some friends that actually grew up as winemakers, and they came and saved the day over and over again in my first year. Um, I can still recall vividly one time I was filtering a rosé, and it was going in pink, and it came out white. And I was like, hmm, something's off here. What to do, what to do? Sweat was dribbling slowly, you know, getting slightly flushed. I think, I'm calling a friend. I called Xavier, told him the problem. He was like, pas bouger, rien toucher. Don't move, don't touch anything, I'm coming. So you see this little car coming up with screeching brakes, this winemaker rolling out, running into my winery, looking at the wine, sniffing it, tasting it like that, because we don't use a lot of glasses, we do it by hand at that point. Um, and he's like, no, y'a pas de problème, c'est normal. So it's normal. I was standing there like that again, sweat dripping down my body. I thought I had just ruined my whole vintage. Well, that happened often in the first year. <laughs> Later on, um, it became easier, honestly. I started to get the hang of the whole wine science thing, and that proves that, well, if you want to, you can do pretty much anything, I guess. I mean, me and science. Anyhow, um, there were more things. We needed to adapt to the French way of living, and especially the French way in Bordeaux. And that's quite special. Um, mainly male run. Uh, today is Women's Day. Well, I don't think in Bordeaux there are enough women to put in this room that actually have higher functions. So it's just a male reign world. In the wine world, there's a lot of women. You won't find that many in Bordeaux. Imagine me coming up there, 25 year old, yay high, women. Hello, I'm going to run a chateau here. 
that worked out quite well. Our first harvest, um, everybody, and I mean everybody, came walking up to my boyfriend going, qu'est-ce qu'on fait? So what are we supposed to do? Where are we supposed to go? And he, the poor thing, didn't speak French and also <laughs> didn't know what to do. So he said, um, na, femelle. Not knowing that femelle in French does not really mean lady. It means more something like, well, bitch or female dog. <laughs> um, yeah, that was uh, very nice. I loved it, honestly. Um, however, as time went by, we got to uh, experiment a lot more and he actually made good friends there. At first it was hilarious. I need to translate all the jokes and they were mainly filthy. But over time, They've actually come to accept me in Bordeaux, and uh, they see me as, well, almost a winemaker. It's been at least three years since the guys have told me to just go to the kitchen and get coffee while the adults are speaking, so that's a good thing. Um, however, as I grew into the whole winemaking thing, um, I felt that I needed to experiment, you know? Once you know something, you want to do something new. Well, in my area in Bordeaux, that wasn't uh, as easy as I thought, because I had loads of ideas, and everybody was telling me, nah, we don't do it like that in Bordeaux. I'm like, but I do. One of those experiments was the Demi Mouille. It's um, actually a 600 liter new French oak barrel, in which you put grapes in, you ferment the whole thing until it's wine. So the wine never leaves that barrel for a year. Well, um, the first time I was doing it, everybody told me I was insane. I thought I was insane as well, because I was trying to push a 1,200 kilogram barrel to roll it and actually make like everything in there mingle itself for the fermentation. Imagine what I thought when I saw, well, at least three cars with my friends in it, drive up our driveway, they just walk out, and what had they done? They had planned an excursion with their friends to come and see the crazy Dutch winemaker. Um, yes, so it was kind of like Discovery Channel, you know? Um, here you see a rare species of winemaker idioticus duchess wrecking a wine. Beware, she may bite when agitated. And I'm standing there pushing my barrel. Well, over time, actually, that wine um, turned into the wine that, well, made our chateau a little bit. A year later, I tasted it, and it was good. And I had my friends taste it, and they also thought it was good. So that was a miracle. Um, for me, it was a definite miracle. I really thought I made something worthwhile. Well, ever since, I've been experimenting all the time. And my friends have come to accept it more and more, but still, they tend to ask me if I've been drinking. I mean, I now have a, a barrel with a friend of mine, because I also do some um, making of wine at other, well, people's chateaus. I do some consulting and selling, etc. And I have this barrel, uh, which is 100% new French oak, and it's a Simeon, so white wine. And this guy, you should just see it. If I come over to taste that wine, he walks up to it like it is the reactor of Chernobyl. He's like, this thing is dangerous. He keeps on telling me that that wine can never be good. And I'm like, well, that's my risk, we'll see. But I think it's gonna turn out quite, quite nice. Um, in terms of change, I think that was maybe already enough. However, uh, in the past year, I've gone through some more changes. Um, there were a couple of people that tend to ask me, don't you want to teach about wine? I was always very hesitant. I'm the most impatient person in the world, so I thought this is not going to work. However, they tricked me into it about three years ago for the first time, and I loved teaching. So last year I actually started um, with a partner, uh, a teaching, well, an education company, in the Netherlands to educate people, both professionals and amateurs, about wine. And um, yeah, we're doing all kinds of new and interesting things with that. So I've become a winemaker, I've become a teacher, I'm consulting, and I'm doing pretty much everything I never thought I would be doing. Um, so what's the bottom line here of this whole story? Um, I heard that I was supposed to talk about things that are worth spreading. Well, first I thought, well, let's do some guru thing. You can do anything. Well, that's not my style. I can't do anything, and probably neither can you. I was just lucky that I found the right thing to do. Um, so what I want to give to you all on this day is um, that you need to cherish the people that you love. Because I've done everything for my mother, and I will continue to try and make her proud. So try to cherish the people you love while you still have them. And um, 
if you have the chance, also have a good glass of wine with them. Three, two, one, ready.